Hello, and welcome to another session of the Houdini training. My name is Gianvito Serra, and today we're going to learn a little bit about uh, how contents work inside of HIP files. HIP files, uh, in addition to containing obviously geometries and, and things of a sort, uh, they do actually are containers for much of many other types of data. Uh, Although Houdini can process geometry and does a good job of processing geometry, it is also a tool that can actually process images, it can process audio, it can do it can process just you know XML data. It is a very general framework for actually just processing data. Uh, the heap file, in order to be able to service this, is separated into multiple contents, which help uh, keep order to all the different uh, data types that we deal with in Houdini. So, for now, what you, we have seen is what is called the scene context, okay, which is where we have we are at our object level, and if we drop, for example, a tube, you know, we can just look at objects here, and you know, we can move them around, transform them, or whatnot, okay. If we right click inside of here, you will notice that we have an option at the very top on the path that says other networks. And from here we can see that there is a few other icons that we have available, okay? Each icon that we have here represents a different context which Houdini allows you, and which Houdini allows you to modify data. So, for example, we have a channel context, which allows you to modify motion effects networks or chop nets. Okay, so if we come here, we can see some of that. So we can create some noise and see the noise here. So this is again, you know, still the same application, but we have a scene view, which is what we're at here. And where you have your objects in the scene, where you also have your lights and cameras. Then we saw there is also a channel context where we have motion effects. And similar to how we create geometry, we can create animation, audio, anything that we want, okay? There is also a image context, okay, which allows you to create composite networks. Okay, when we dive in here, when we look at the composite view, we can come and create a image likewise we have also a some other contexts were not necessarily associated with creating assets per se but they are actually able to they manage other types of data they manage data in a certain way so for example the output se section is dedicated to actually doing creating output operators. So for example, if we wanted to do rendering, we can create mantra nodes, which allows us to trigger renders in the scene. We also have a shop open section, which allows us to create, for example, materials. We can even have a few presets here that we can look at. And we can even come here and, you, and assign these materials to objects. So for example, if we wanted to do, let's see, one that shows me the normals, we can just assign that to the object here. And the moment that we go to render the object, you should see that material assigned. Very cool. There is also VETS, uh, which we're not going to cover yet, uh, so it goes into a bit more of an advanced part. 
But there is also uh, dub nets which are done used for doing dynamic operations, particles, explosions, etc., etc. Um, a lot of your operations that you're going to do most likely will work in one of these contexts predominantly, but it is most most operations or most uh, systems that I have seen built in Houdini use multiple contexts to do the operation. A very important context, which we don't see in the list there, but it's actually one of the most important, is the surface operators. The surface operator context is what happens when you create and let me just start from scratch here. And let me just create a sphere. Oops, sorry, I meant to, there we go. If we dive in, this is the context that happens when we dive inside of an object, okay? So this is the context that, were, that allows us to create geometry and modify geometry. So, for example, this is where you will go to actually see your sphere shape actually change and to actually modify your rows and columns. Okay. Now, every single one of these contexts changes the, the nodes that you actually have available for you to be sensitive to the kind of operations that you do. So say, for example, we wanted to create a camera we obviously have the shelf tools, which we can use to create nodes, but also in any of the networks that we are, we can press a tab button to bring the tab menu, which gives us access to the different nodes that we can create for that particular network. Okay. All of the nodes are put into sub nets to make it into, into subfolders to make it nice and easy to navigate. But you can also go to all at any context and find every node that is available inside that context. Okay. So for example, if we go to primitive here, we can see that we have bot the primitives that we have on the shelf too. So it's just bots, platonic solids, spheres, torus, font, grid, tube, etc. etc. If we wanted to, we can click on sphere here and it's asking us to drop a node in the network. And here we go. We created a sphere. Now, if we dive inside the sphere, you will notice that there is a sphere node inside of the surface operator network, okay? Which is the one that is responsible to create a sphere geometry that we see here, okay? From here, for example, if we create, click on the sphere node versus, for example, clicking on the sphere node, you will notice that the parameters are different. These parameters are much like the parameters that you see on objects in Maya, where you actually have like the transformation of the object, the rotation, and the scale, etc., etc. Okay. But. If we go inside of the surface operator context, you will notice that our, our graph or nodes look, parameters look a little different. So for example, we can change whether this sphere is a primitive sphere or whether it is made out of polygons, whether it's a polygon mesh, uh, whether it is made out of NURBS, whether it is made out of a Bezier, and diff some different things. And when we pick polygon mesh, we can even choose to modify the number of rows and the number of columns that we have. And we can even expand the size, change the size of the actual, the shape of the actual shape of the object. Now you will notice that in this particular case, my transformations are all zeroed out, but the shape of the object is changing because I'm changing the actual geometry itself. Okay. Now, inside of here, if we press the tab menu, you will notice that the tab menu looks also quite different. So for example, we have, you know, we have operations such as blast, break, uh, extrude, you know, facet, edge collapse, edge flip. So operations that you normally see when you're actually doing operations that are associated with geometry. If we switch back to, if we right click on object and go to other networks, switch back to our image context where we had our 
oops, for butterfly. And notice that I'm clicking on composite view to actually go there. You can click on scene view to go back to your model view. Or you can click on motion effects view to go back to your actual motion effects curve, to your actual uh, channel curves, okay? But if we go to composite view and go dive inside of the image node that we created, you will notice that the node that we have here is actually an image node that loads an image. To make it really load any image we want, uh, this is just one image that we have here, but we could, for example, browse to allocation of where you may have other images. Uh, let me see what I have a few here. Browsing to allocation of an image and loading it up. Okay. Likewise, the nodes that we have available here are nodes that you will expect on a compositor where you have stuff that can you can use to change your levels, change your hue curve, and your color, etc., etc. So if, for example, we press tab, go to color, and drop a levels, okay, and then we left click, and then wire from here into this, you will notice that when we set the active flight to this node, that I can actually adjust my image as such. If we go back to the objects again, and we dive inside of sphere, you will notice that I can put, for example, if I press tab, we can put a, let's see what would be a good one, we'll do a poly extrude, then we'll left click, and then into this, and then turn the visibility on this guy, you can see that we can actually see the extrusion of my objects happening. Just to make that a little more visible, I'm going to switch to not keeping the points here so you can see the effect of the extrusion happening on my sphere. I can still go back to my sphere node and change parameters here and see everything updated of the fly with my extrusion. Okay. Very cool. Another example, if we went back to the channel operators, and we went back to my motion effects view. So when we come here, if we wanted to, we could, for example, add a filter under shape. While listening to this, and set it as the active node. We can do, for example, a Gaussian filter to soften the effect of the actual noise. So its operators are basically are, are sensitive to the context on which they are at, are at. Okay. Now there's several ways that we can actually move in between different contexts, and you guys saw that you can switch in between top level contexts by switching here. Okay. That's good, but sometimes say for example I want to be able to have my image context next to my geo objects. Uh, you can simply do that by press by using a manager. So if we go to our tab menu and go to managers, and this should be available in every sub context, you can always drop a network that is associated with any context. So for example, I can drop a copnet here, you can dive inside, then I have a mini image context here which I can use to actually bring other images in here. Okay, so here is a butterfly again, but this is just a, this particular one as you notice is inside of my object level, not in a separate network altogether. Okay, very cool. Same, I can do the same thing with a channel operator and actually bring a wavelength in here again as well, so I can create a wave and actually see it in my motion effects very cool 
Now you notice that every time that I create or switch in between counter sets, I keep having to switch in between different tabs here to see what I'm actually doing. It's good to know that you have these tabs and they're available for you to be able to switch in between different contexts, but it's, imp it's also not ideal to have to do that by hand every time. If you like to, you can click on the plus button here and add a, what is called a context view. Okay, and the context view will automatically switch your contents every time that we switch, go in between different subnets. So for example, if I go inside of this copnet, it automatically switches me to image mode. If I leave the copnet and go back on a level, I'm going back to object level. Okay, if I go to my chopnet to see my little wave, it automatically switches me to wave. Very cool. Some people find the context view very convenient uh, and it is something that you can add if you like uh, to if you don't want to have to manage which context view you're on. Some people like to have control of what context they are viewing. Uh, so that's why there is both options available. Very cool. So that, co that covers everything that we needed to talk in regards to different contexts. Uh, please take a minute to experiment with some of the notes that you have available in each context and uh, try some different things that you can do with your geometry. Like for example, the, if you go to polygons, we'll try the clip operator, which allows me to chop up the object at any point. Very cool. Well, thank you for watching, and then we'll see you in the next lesson.